Want to hear some wolf puns? You'll be howling with laughter. <coughs> it's been a while since I've discussed traditional 2D animation on my channel. I think the last time was when I re-uploaded my review for the 2017 My Little Pony movie. Re-uploaded because YouTube was being, well, YouTube. <coughs> What? I guess it's mainly because the animation industry is dominated by CGI nowadays. I agree, I agree, I agree. Though I wouldn't really say this is a bad thing, since they're simply different mediums. But you have to admit that 2D animated movies are overshadowed by CGI movies, especially when it comes to the marketing. With the exception of anime, feature length 2D animation is just not as financially viable as CGI feature length animated movies. But that's not to say 2D animated feature length movies have become extinct. CGI is not the bad guy here. And I also don't believe there is or should be a conflict between the two. But historically speaking, the appeal of CGI and technological advancements are simply more interesting and appealing to a general audience than artistic and cultural changes in mainstream entertainment. Art movements come and go, and not everyone finds art movements that interesting. Technology advances and audiences become more sophisticated and, frankly, more entitled to higher quality visual storytelling. So when a CGI animated movie is of bad quality, although at the time of recording this I haven't actually seen Eurig and the Witch yet, most of the audience can see it regardless of knowing any Anything about animation because most CGI movies tend to strive for photorealism or a caricature of reality at least. With 2D animated movies you can be far more experimental and stylized as you're not going for photorealism you're going for believability which doesn't have to be photorealistic. Smaller, lesser known animated studios pop up all the time, but very few manage to survive. Cartoon Saloon is an animation studio based in Kitglenny, Ireland, and is a five-time Academy Award, Golden Globe, BAFTA and Emmy nominated studio formed by Paul Young, Tom Moore and Nora Twomey. I hope I've said that name right. They started making shorts and moved into making feature films such as The Secret of Cows, Song of the Sea, Breadwinner and their most recent release, Wolfwalkers. As obscure as some of you may consider a film like Wolfwalkers to be, this film and two previous films from the same studio were nominated for the Best Animated Feature Academy Award for 2021. Wolfwalkers lost the award to Pixar's Soul but I was perfectly okay with that. But then again, I hadn't seen Farmageddon, although I had seen all the rest of the films that had been nominated. Though it would have been funny if Wolfwalkers bet a film that was about sheep, but whatever. Insert an inevitably predictable Irish sheep joke here. What I also find funny is how some of you guys have been asking me to review this film as well as Secret of Kells and Song of the Sea, even though I've already technically reviewed Song of the Sea, asking me to give my so-called unique perspective on these films since they're Irish, but <laughs> I'm not Irish, but Scottish and Irish lore do often intertwine and have a lot of similarities. And honestly, I'm talking about this film because it's one of the most visually enticing films I have seen in a while. But also to put to bed the fact some people have written off this movie because they think it's basically Pixar's Brave but with wolves. Even though Wolfwalkers is set in Ireland and Brave is set in Scotland and they're two very distinctive different countries. Honestly, I do see why people came to that conclusion. I mean, it is a Celtic film starring a redhead where the parent changes into an animal and it's up to them to save them from the hunters who happen to also be their family. Oh my gosh. It's just I watched this film a few days after watching Mitchells vs the Machines from Sony Pictures Animation and as different as these films are in both genre and mediums, both films got me excited over how there seems to be no limit to what can be done in animation now. Wolfwalkers is far more memorable to me in comparison to Song of the Sea though because Wolfwalkers has a much more eccentric tone than Song of the Sea does in my opinion. The danger that comes with talking about any of these films though is that you can get caught up in the visuals and for Forget there is an actual story to follow. Going into this, I was worried there would be far more style than substance, and that was definitely the feeling I got when I watched Song of the Sea, but luckily here, the story is just as interesting and immersive as the visuals are, and not at all distracting. When you get a movie that has such intricate stylized visuals in the background especially, the characters can often clash. It's a problem that I have with the visual styles of Disney Sleeping Beauty. The art style to me is very similar to this film, as both movies are going for a medieval tab 
tapestry look, but Disney's Sleeping Beauty is set in the 14th century while Wolfwalkers is set in the 1600s. With the exception of Maleficent, the characters in Sleeping Beauty are just not as interesting or memorable, and for me, don't really marry into the style of the backgrounds well enough. But I guess we can talk about Sleeping Beauty another time. Wolfwalkers is much more free and wild than Sleeping Beauty and manages to have a much more magical tone to it. How ironic when there's actually very little magic in Wolfwalkers compared to Sleeping Beauty anyway. Or at least it's used sparingly. I was also getting a Watership Down vibe, in the sense that both films are about the human destructive power against nature, but also in the way the beginning of Watership Down established its lore before moving into the main story. I personally would love to see a feature length film done in this style, and I think Wolf Walkers is as close as we're going to get to that. So let's take a closer look. Wolf Walkers is an original concept created by Moran Stewart, and the animation alternates between a very unique 2D style and a sort of woodblock aesthetic and loose, expressive line work. It kind of reminds me of pyrography in a way. The movie is set during the English colonisation of Ireland and is about a father and daughter hunter team who are sent to a remote outpost to rid the surrounding woods of wolves. While the daughter Robin explores the forest, she meets a wild child named Mabe who is a mysterious shapeshifter, appears as a human when she's awake and a wolf when her human body is asleep. The movie deals with themes of species extinction and habitat destruction and is a story about controlling society society and taming nature, which almost always leads to destruction anyway. There's a very Shakespearean feel to the story, reminding me of Midsummer Night's Dream in a way. How fitting since the main character's name is Robin Goodfellow, which became the moniker of Puck from Midsummer Night's Dream. Though in reality wolves were hunted to extinction in Ireland by the late 1700s, wolves are a prominent part in Irish mythology. Wolf Walkers literally draws from history and folklore here to tell a genuinely enticing story that anyone of any nationality can get into. The Irish word for wolf is Mactire, which means son of the countryside. The wolf is a symbol of guardianship, loyalty and spirit. They have the ability to make quick and firm emotional attachments and often need to trust their own instincts. They can also teach others to do the same, to trust your heart and mind and have control over your own life, which is exactly what Maeve does with Robin. Though the wolfwalkers may be mistaken as werewolves, wolfwalkers retain their human soul while walking as a wolf, and unlike a werewolf, also retains the memories and experiences of the human existence. Though wolves were also used as a symbol of evil and threat in Christian art, especially during the Renaissance, and demonized in many different cultures, mythologies and folklore, the wolves in this movie are not evil in any way, they're just animals. But we still relate to the town folk fearing them, as just because they're not evil, that doesn't mean they're not dangerous. Hence the the ignorance and hatred toward wolves and wolf walkers here. The film to me has a very rustic and purposefully inconsistent art style. It looks and feels like an illustrated storybook or even a medieval tapestry come to life. How fitting, since one of the most famous tapestries from the 16th century onwards is The Return from the Hunt, and hunting is one of the main themes in this story, more specifically the hunting of wolves. Another theme that was popular for tapestries was depicting battles and military, usually to celebrate the victories of the person who commissioned them. This is perfectly reflected in the villain of the movie. Though the film is clearly influenced by Millefleur style, there is a heavy heavy infusement of Art Deco style here, which gives the movie a very contemporary feel. It does seem a little too cartoony for the tone of the story at times for me, especially in some of the character designs for the townsfolk, but I also think this adds to its appeal. There are moments when you see the construction lines to how the characters are built up, especially with the wolves, similar to how some rotoscoped movies like Disney's 100 Round Dalmatians had, but here it feels fully intentional instead of just, you know, a happy accident during the process of rotoscoping. It gives the wolves and and the forest a wild and unpolished look which reflects the untamable nature of the wolf walkers themselves as well as how rigid the town people are in comparison. Traditional staging of landscapes and characters has been slightly abandoned here to produce far more interesting and unusual compositions using split screens and triptychs as visual framing devices, even reducing and blurring the aspect ratio at heightened emotional moments of the movie. It allowed the film to have the same freedom a graphic novel allows. Visually speaking, this movie broke a lot of rules when it comes to cinematography and film composition, but I think that adds to its unique appeal and its success. It was like they took the visual experience of 
a pop-up book and just animated that. The way the townspeople and the town itself is drawn is a very solid, heavy manner, almost like an anvil in comparison to the forest, which is itself soft and freely moving. Like, the town and the forest were created from separate mediums altogether, the town being drawn and painted in solid flat colours, while the forest is very much like a liquid. In a way, it's like there's some sort of chemical reaction between a solid and liquid, and that is where the conflict is. In a way, it's like the two are clashing together here in a metaphorical and literal sense to reflect the conflict between the town and the forest. Or to put another way, the town is a box and the forest is a circle, and the box is slowly cutting into the circle, and the circle is trying its hardest not to burst. Even the character designs reflect this. Robin has a very square structure to her face and body, while Mae is almost a perfect circle, framed by her long thick hair, and the forest wraps around the wolf walkers and the wolves like a natural frame. Even the wolf pack themselves flow like a living river through the wood as they follow the wolf walkers or as they chase after Robin. There's a hauntingly beautiful quality to the atmosphere of this film that does feel a little sinister at first, but not threatening. Wild and untamed perhaps, but not malicious. The relationship between the two girls, Robin and Mabe, is also very endearing, like a sisterly bond. They are are both trapped in their worlds and they work together to find their freedom. So I'm not exactly sure how old the two girls are, I think Mabe is the younger of the two, which would make sense since that would make Mabe more vulnerable and reliant on Robin for help, while her mother is asleep. Permanently asleep, I mean. Oh look, there's another Sleeping Beauty similarity. <laughs> Mabe reveals that her mother hasn't returned for a while, hence why she's still asleep, leaving her and the wolf pack all alone in the forest. Though the forest itself is being chopped down by the town people, Mabe refuses to leave it without her mother, so Robin agrees to help Mabe find where her mother's wolf form is. When Robin's father finds out she's been going to the forest outside the town walls, he scolds her and orders her to work in the scullery. I don't want to give everything away here, but the relationship between the two young girls makes Robin experience freedom while also giving giving Mabe the experience of being confined. Robin is like a caged bird in a metaphorical sense, as she is trapped in a very oppressive environment, symbolising her sense of confinement and longing for freedom. Mabe's metaphorical cage is more to do with needing to leave the safety of the forest in order to save her pack. Though literal cages also play a part in the movie at several key points, it's never in your face about it, at least not in my opinion. A cage could be an occupation, like it is for Robin's father, or it could be be a physical limitation like it is for Mabe's mother. Often, changing our outlook and attitudes toward a situation is all that is needed to unlock the metaphorical cage, and that is precisely what Robin tries to do with her father. Mabe believes that the situation can be fixed, so it doesn't drain her magic anymore, but isn't exactly sure if she is strong enough. Together, though, the girls find ways to bring the conflict to an end and bring freedom to the town and the forest. Overall, Wolf Walkers has a very unique atmosphere, feeling mysterious and haunting, but also wild and fun. It has a truly timeless quality and I cannot recommend it enough. I'm Mad Munchkin, stay creative. <laughs>